All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about analyzing data, specifically looking at quartiles, interquartile range, and box and whisker plots. So I'm going to take my data that I have here, the 7468 line, and I'm going to uh, just analyze it using those setups. The first thing that I need to do is rewrite it in such a way that uh, I have it in numeric order. So ascending, preferably, 3 kind of McDonald's colors now. Three, four, 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 six, seven, eight, ten, and eleven. Now, when I talk about interquartile range, or when anybody talks about interquartile range that knows any idea what they're talking about, uh, we're talking about breaking it up into uh, groups of four, like a quart, a quintile would be five. So I tend to think of it in terms of a dollar bill, and then the quarters that could go into it. So uh, in a dream universe, I could draw good circles, but I'm not living there, so you just have to accept the fact that these quarters are awful looking. Uh, so anyway, 25 cents. That whole thing. So there's four quarters in a dollar, essentially, is where I'm headed with it. Now, uh, there's a couple points of reference that we need to make when we work with these. Uh, the first, which is the minimum number. And I realize how awful that color is as a against this background. So the minimum number. So we'll say min. In our dollar, it would be wherever it is down here, kind of min. By the way, the dollar thing will pay off because it'll make it really easy for us to do the uh, box and whisker plot here in just a minute. Uh, the next thing that we probably look for is the maximum number, of course, because why have a min if you don't have a max? Max would come right here in the old dollar analogy. Um, then we'd want the median. median would come right here at the 50 cent point. So 50% of your data goes to one side and 50% of the data is above that number. And then we'll have uh, Q1 and Q3. So basically we'll have Q1 will be here after the first quarter. So it's essentially the median of the lower level or the lower two quarters. Uh, on the other end you'll have Q3, which is the median of uh, this set of data. So in my little setup here, I need to figure out what the median is. So the specific amount for the minimum, by the way, would be 3, because it's the smallest. The maximum would be 11. Now my median is what I'd look for next. These cancel. So I'm looking somewhere between 6 and 4. So to get my median value, I'll do 4 plus 6 divided by 2. So my median value will just be 5. Uh, so here's my median right here. To get Q1, I need to look just at this set of data right here. I need to find the median value there, which is right here. So the Q1 value, and by the way, if I had two in the middle there, uh, I would do the uh, this average of those two. So say it had been three and four together, a three and a half would be the median, or the Q1. But the Q1 here is four, because it's the median value of that first set, the first two quarters. On the other side of it, if I'm dealing with this set, the top half, so to speak, I want to find the median there. It's the 8. So I would say that my Q3 value is 8. Now what this, what I can do with this information, oh, I should also talk about interquartile range. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, what I can do with this is make a box and whisker plot, which will give me some idea about how the data is skewed, whether it's uh, one direction where there, most of the data falls at one end, or you know that sort of thing. As you can see, there's a considerable distance between Q3 and the maximum compared to the minimum in the Q1. So that'll shift what the, the, the graph looks like, which will tell us that 
the data sort of shifted in one direction. It might push us to pick the median as opposed to the mean as our uh, central tendency of choice, that kind of thing. So the interquartile range I'm going to call it the IQ range, which is really unfair. So the int Q range? I don't know. Interquartile range is right there. Um, anyway, interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So basically, this distance right here, I need to know how far they are apart. So the middle two quarters, so the middle 50 cents. So in this case, it would be 8 minus 4. So the interquartile range is 4. And all of this stuff is really sort of an assessment of range. Uh, the maximum minus the minimum will give you the range of the entire data set. The interquartile range will give you an idea of what's going on in the middle so you can sort of see uh, maybe one of those numbers uh, is what's considered to be an outlier. An outlier is a number that's way out of the scheme of things. And if you look at the box and whisker plot, we may be able to see if there's really sort of an outlier here. Um, so let's make a box and whisker plot. Box of whisker plots, you want to start out with sort of a, a number line underneath, and uh, it has two dots, one at the minimum, one at the maximum. So I'm going to make my little setup. I'm going to have three at the one end, and 11 at the, the right side. So I'm going to make little dots here. Uh, those are eventually going to be my whiskers. Now I need to make my box. Uh, I'm going to make a box that sort of looks like this in some form. Uh, so the first line I'm going to make is at Q1. So right at 4 there, I'm going to uh, go ahead and make a line right here. That's Q1. The next line I'm going to make is at the median, so right here. And then I'm going to make another line at Q3. And then I'm just going to make a box out of it. And now to finish it off, I need to connect my whiskers. So I'm going to draw a line here and draw a line here. So if you see the box and whisker plot, you can tell. They'll say, what's the minimum value? Well, you go to the dot on the left, and it's 3. If they want to know what the median is, you look for that little line in the middle of the box, and it's 5. But what it really tells us is how the data is skewed. You can see that the median value is way down here as opposed to the whisker that's way up here. We can't really tell uh, necessarily if 11 is an outlier uh, based on a box and whisker plot. So I guess I should write that word up in case people have never seen it. An outlier is uh, basically a data point that's uncharacteristic of the set. But since 10 is here, and you know, 11 is probably OK as an outlier. But if I had like 25 in there, that would be significantly further away from uh, the rest of the data set. So I could say, yeah, 25 is an outlier. So the term outlier makes the most sense here. It's just the one that's uh, way outside. the uh, overall feel, the tendencies of the number set. So way outside the number set, essentially. One that's kind of the weirdo uh, outlier set number. So anyway, quartiles, uh, just uh, find your minimum, maximum, find your median. Uh, Q1 would be the median of the first group, or the first half of data points. Uh, the Q3 would be the median of the second half of data points. And find the interquartile range. You want to subtract Q3 minus Q1, find out how far apart that middle is, uh, which is, you know, not insignificant here. And then finally, you want to have your maximum number, of course. Make your little box and whisker plot out of it. And based on the one that I have right here, I can see that most of the data is sort of shifted down to the 4 or 5 range and you know all my data is sort of skewed to the lower end whereas 11 is keeping it uh, propped up but there's enough numbers at the uh, the top to spread it out so at least the interquartile range shifts up to 8 so it tells me something about the data